I'm never more me than when I receive you. I'm never more free in the things that I do. Keep my heart and mind and will in communion with you still. I'm never more me. Take my eyes off me and turn my heart toward you. I find the peace in praise. Your kingdom's everything. This adoring heart longs for the presence of the King. I'm never more me than when I receive you. I'm never more free in the things that I do. Keep my heart and mind and will in communion with you still. Yourself to me, a miracle. Heaven meets my soul. Take my body given, broken now for you. The chalice of my saving blood poured out to make things new. I'm never more me. Still, I'm never more me. Never more me. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. God is acting in us and through us. In our changing world, the truth of his word and the gift of his holy Eucharist nourish us in the kingdom of God. We gather as the body of Christ, foremost to give God glory and to offer all that we are back to him. And in so doing, our Lord fills us. We celebrate the 30th Sunday in ordinary time. Let's not be distracted by masks or distancing or anything. Also, please turn off or silence all electronic devices so that nothing takes us away from the God's holy and powerful word being spoke to, spoken to each one of us in this holy mass. Please, after giving God glory and receiving him, 
Let's go forth alive in the kingdom, but avoid gathering in the commons. This is temporary and will pass. Welcome to anyone who is visiting or would like to belong to this community of faith. Please contact the parish office with your desire to belong. And now, let us be still as all angels and saints in heaven adore and praise Jesus' life-giving sacrifice. Let us see what they see, give what they give, receive what they receive, and become one with them. God's holy presence moves us in true worship to do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love who is God, and the communion in the life of the Holy Spirit be with you. With your spirit. God is our salvation. There is no salvation outside of God who has come into human flesh in Christ. There is no justification outside of Christ. He comes to us in word and sacrament as we call to mind our sins and recognize the miracle of his saving mystery we are now in. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sin and bring us to everlasting life. That angels and saints glorify God. We become human when we glorify God. Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, and we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, we pray. Increase our hope and charity. And make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise and truly be alive through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourself in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord.
not my Savior, you who gave great victories to your King, and show kindness to your anointed. I A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction, with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus So how do you determine the priority of laws? 
And you hear a lot about justice, but what is true justice? These questions really are at the root of the gospel today. The Pharisees asked the Lord, teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? Now, just so you understand the complexity of the problem and what they're trying to catch him up on, is that there were more than 613 laws that governed the people of Israel. These laws spanned everything from ritual purity to how, the God, how God should be honored on the Sabbath and what a person owed to his or her family to theft and even punishments for murder. Now, if you think that's a lot of legalese, let me give you something to compare it to. In 1982, the U.S. Department of Justice tried and failed to determine the total number of laws in the U.S. You probably are violating one even as you sit. Now, when they focused on criminal law alone, the department compiled a list of 3,000 common criminal offenses. We humans like to make laws, and boy, do we love to condemn those who violate them. Often, innocence has nothing to do with the verdict. So for all you youth out there who are considering a profession, trust me, there's always going to be a need for lawyers. Now in the gospel today, you see the Pharisees, quote unquote, testing Jesus, waiting for him to trip up and be exposed as the uneducated country bumpkin and fraud they believed him to be. The name Pharisee is linked to the Hebrew term meaning separated ones because they separated themselves from all form of religious and ceremonial uncleanliness. Listen, they were all about social distancing. They are the original germaphobes. They would have fit in just perfectly today. They were known for their strict observance of ritual piety, purity, and tithing. For them, it's all about the law and the commandments. It's often not at all about justice. Beyond the God-given Ten Commandments, more than 603 additional laws were created, in many cases, to justify how not to treat the other with love. For example, we hear in Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan that a priest and then a Levite, a member of the priestly class, passes by the half-dead man lying on the side of the road. They pass by on the other side of the road. Why do they pass bypass the injured man? Well, presumably because they want to remain ritually pure. And caring for the injured man causes the priest or Levite to become ritually unclean and, un and then unable to offer sacrifices at the temple. So what do they do? They ignore the dying man. Where is justice? Jesus condemns the Pharisees in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 7 for twisting the law uh, such that you did not have to give money, you could give to money to the temple in lieu of giving it to your parents who are in need as a devious way to defraud their parents and at the same time enrich themselves. Jesus is clear and his disdain for how the Pharisees act. He is recorded in three gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke is calling them out as hypocrites. In the gospel of Matthew, they get, he gets uh, really tough on him. He says, you serpents, you brood of vipers, how can you flee from the judgment of Gehenna? Now, just so we don't sit here and feel too superior, we have today laws that protect the right of a mother to quote unquote, choose to murder her child in the womb. Sorry, but I despise that word pro-choice. 
talk about hypocritical. Certainly, no one gives the right of choice to the born child. Again, the law serves self-interest, not love. And how can we fool ourselves into thinking that in such a law we are somehow loving the mother? How could it be? Where is the justice or love for the innocent? Now the Lord's answer to the Pharisees demonstrates that justice must be at the root of every law and that love, not self-interest, must propel godly justice. It's important to understand the language here. When Jesus talks about love, he is not talking about sexual love. He is not talking about selfish desire, nor is he talking about love that is within the family, fraternal love. The word in Greek, uh, the word he uses is translated in Greek as agapeo love. And this is how God loves us and how Jesus commands us to love both God and our neighbor. Loving as God loves means willing the good of the other for the good of the other. You've heard it several times over the last few weeks. In this sacrificial love, there is no contract. For example, I love you if you love me back in equal manner. This love is 100% self-sacrifice. I love you regardless of the outcome to me personally. And Jesus is not talking about society's often warped sense of justice. Worldly justice is frankly about condemning, is it not? God is just and so justice, even in the world, must always be viewed by us from a divine perspective. Now the catechism defines justice as the, quote, moral virtue that consists in the constant and firm will to give their due to God and neighbor. For example, Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. On the cross, he satisfies God's just wrath at all of us. And as you heard beautifully read in the first reading, for those, all of us who have in some way, shape or form molested or oppressed foreigners, who have mistreated any widow, orphan or the poor, directly or indirectly through neglect. God's anger at us is a normal response to injustice, to the violation of human rights, acts that degrade, and acts which block access to love. Jesus fulfills the law by justly offering his life, not degraded by any sin, for us who are under just punishment for our sin. Now it's interesting how you, you can see how God views justice. In the Gospel of John, he writes, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Justice is about making things right, repairing, not destroying. Think of justice and divine justice as the ultimate right justification in a document. It lines things up beautifully just along the right, exactly along the right. It lines things up correctly. It makes it right. It doesn't destroy. Now we too ought to be outraged at injustice, resist it, and act in love. So what more appropriate way to express our continued outrage about any unjust law than in a few weeks at the ballot box and then hold our leaders accountable? Yes, we live in the tension between a world, between the world we live in governed by this preoccupation with self-interest and our heavenly citizenship but the pull must be heavenward. The church speaks clearly about voting in the USCCB document, forming consciences for faithful citizens, when it states, quote, 
The threat of abortion remains our preeminent priority because it directly attacks life itself, because it takes place within the sanctuary of the family, and because of the number of lives destroyed. You see, you can't neglect the murder of the unborn and like those who ignored the dying man and the parable of the Good Samaritan, pass on the other side of the road. There is no defense in saying, I will not impose my sense of justice on, the, on another. Look, my sense of justice isn't the sense of justice that counts. It's about divine justice from conception to natural death, period. Now, divine justice is always enacted within the boundaries of who God is, love and mercy. Does God harbor indignation at the unjust? No, but God does despise injustice. Does the Father hate sinners? No, but he hates sin. Listen, God burns with compassion for his children who have wandered into the danger of sin. It is not out of anger or vengeance that the Father sends the Son to save, but precisely as you heard, out of love. Jesus and his divine mercy satisfies justice, willing our good through paying the price for our sin on the cross. Now law, right law, just law, on the other hand, is defined within the catechism as a rule of conduct enacted for the sake of the common good. In a world governed by a godly structure, love is the vehicle through which justice guided by love and mercy is dispensed. True justice, rooted in love, propelled by the law. It's not the way, other way around as we often see it where justice is the tool of the law and that tool is often warped bent in self-interest. Jesus tells us today, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it, equal to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How do we love God with every fiber of our being? How do we will his good? We love God by loving in equal measure, those whom God loves, our neighbor. St. John writes in his first letter, if anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he sees cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God, must also love his brother. It's from 1 John chapter 4. Pretty clear. Like it or not, you can't say that you love God and at the same time molest, oppress, cheat, disparage in word or deed, or do anything other than will the good of your neighbor sacrificially. Yep, we live in the tension as you heard last week, and it's hard but we are not called to live as citizens of the world, but as citizens of heaven. For love is not about fitting in and being friendly. It is about willing the good of the other as other. It is wanting what is best for the other person, whether you like them or not. Love, as you heard today, is the hinge which unites the two covers of the same book, God and neighbor. So hearing that word spoken by our Lord today and then filled with the word incarnate in the Eucharist, we have to go forth to bring about true justice, loving God and loving our neighbor. Now Dorothy Day, whose cause for sainthood is currently being pursued, wrote that, quote, the biggest challenge of the day is how to bring about a revolution of the heart, a revolution that has to start with each one of us. 
Let us daily begin that revolution of love. Love God. Love your neighbor. Protect every life, born and unborn, but especially the innocent unborn, as if it were your own. As Catholics, this law is preeminent, the greatest. We cannot and should not do otherwise. Amen. We praise God who deserves all of our worship, all of our praise, who deserves all of our needs extended to him. You'll hear in the preface in a moment, it is the just thing to do, meaning the right-making thing to do. It is the right and just. It's our duty. It's our salvation. Let us lift our needs now, knowing God is already sent into human flesh to redeem us, his son who awaits our full, full heart open to his justice. For Pope Francis and all bishops, may God grant them strength and courage to preach the truth of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, May God grant them compassion and insight in showing special care for the most vulnerable in our society, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries throughout the world who suffer persecution, may the Lord grant them courage and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in this community struggling with their faith, may the Holy Spirit provide the wisdom and understanding necessary to find their way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Father Pasquale Apuzo, and for the people of St. Joan of Arc, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, Heavenly Father, who only are able to come to you in and through your Son, your divine word made flesh, that our lives may be once more alive in you. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
it is right and it is just, meaning it's the only way. What is right and what is just is the only way. It's the God way. That's the only way. Every other way leads to death. So it is right and just for us to put our lives on this altar at the offertory of every Mass. It is right and just for all of our earthly treasure to be offered in sacrificial love to the Lord. It's a sign of our souls placed on this altar. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. By your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruits of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, a God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty so that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to our aid as mortal beings with your divine Love. You even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself so that the cause of our downfall, our sin, might be swallowed up in Christ and become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty. The company of angels and saints praises you our voices blend with theirs as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and 
once more giving, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have saved. Now, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks. You have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Barrow Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Remember especially Father Apuzo, for whom we celebrate this Eucharist, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. That with blessed Mary, ever virgin mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from distress. As we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the world. Lord Jesus, who said to his apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be May the body and blood of Christ keep you and me ever safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May your sacrament, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, so that whatever now we celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Folks, um, <clears throat> Let's be mindful that uh, faith formation is really, really imperative for our youth, K through 12. Even if they're homeschooled, parents are the first teachers of their kids. The, the body of Christ is here to support you in that role. Um, if you have not yet registered for faith formation, K through 5 or 6 through 12 uh, grades, don't uh, forfeit the, the spiritual nourishment and the support of Christ growing in your children. Also, um, Justin, our youth and young adult minister, is continuing to grow in that position and open up opportunities for youth ministry and young adult ministry. Uh, for young adults in the parish, please be mindful of that as well. There will uh, be no morning mass on Monday um, and Masses will continue, of course, through the rest of the week. Praise and worship every Wednesday at 7 p.m., adoration, followed by Holy Mass, so two Masses on Wednesdays. This coming Saturday, something um, is Halloween. It's the eve of all hallows, the eve of all saints. Um, I think COVID is like, I think the laws, speaking of laws, 613 of them re uh, refer to COVID, I think. And... Um, there's 613 seeds in a pomegranate. Apparently, that's like the sort of like metaphor or folklore for um, the 613 laws that guide every aspect of Jewish life from shoe tying to kettle washing to worship to bed cleansing. And it's the, in the book of Leviticus. In any event, um, I don't believe there's trick-or-treating permitted. Uh, that's, that's a trick, I guess. But we can celebrate all the saints in rightful fashion. Really beautiful. So next Saturday, the Vigil Mass will not be at 5.30. So don't come at 5.30 next week. It's at 5 o'clock. And it will be outdoors. Um, we'll send some more notices about what's called the, the Ring of Fire, Hallow's Eve, Ring of Fire, and Tailgate Party um, around the whole back parking lot We'll have it marked off in 30-foot 30, 30 sections all around the moat, the sidewalk around the moat in the back there. Um, and so each family will have its own car, tailgate, coolers, food, lawn chairs, blankets, fire pit. Bring your portable fire pit or your portable gas grill. Uh, we'll have some supplies in case a couple people need them. We can't supply, you know, 100, but... And... In the center, we'll have some good music, some, uh, you know, for the festivity. But 5 o'clock will be the outdoor mass, big, beautiful outdoor sanctuary. You can come at like 4 or 4.30 to stake out your places around the moat, park your cars, uh, set up your things, and then worship with all the saints at Holy Mass. And at the end of Holy Mass, ignite your fires. Ladies and gentlemen, start your fires. And... Um, yeah, let the, let the fellowship ensue, socially distanced, outdoors, you know, the smoke will keep the virus away, and certainly intercession of the saints. So um, if you have not RSVP'd, we have a limit, um, even with outdoor functions, we have a limit of 250 people. So it would be great, just tell us, you know, email the office or uh, respond to the flock note that, that's going out. Um, you all receive flogno. Let us know how many people in your family. Uh, and again, you have your own little 30-foot, you know, section there. And you'll be building your fires on the sidewalk, not on the grass. Jim Morbin will not like that. So um, build the fires on the sidewalk. He's here? He's here. Yeah, okay, good. I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. 
all kinds of beautiful things. And Monday evening scripture study, uh, this coming Monday, I think like 70 of you guys are signed up for it, and I enjoy going. Yeah, so it's, uh, the, the deadly sin this Monday is sloth, lazy, spiritual laziness. And the, uh, the remedy for that is this God-given gift called zeal. Zeal. That means being on fire for the Lord. Which one do you think is reigning right now? I'm just curious. Spiritual sloth or zeal? Uh, wait, wait till Monday. You can answer it then. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Saint, Saint Michael. I forgot. Now I'm doing the hold the ears up with the thing under here, this fashion faux pas. So we have a beautiful um, concert coming up. Um, Liam, again, is going to bless the parish, sort of this open-ended concert series. And it's going to be on Sunday, November 8th at 3 p.m. And it will feature string soloists that... that um, that uh, Liam will accompany both on organ and piano, I think. Um, so please, put that on your calendar, and we'll also attempt to bring it home through uh, you know, the video YouTube as well.
now the darkness is banished and light is mine In Christ we go Why are so Lord do you bless with such clarity To notice your presence among us pure charity Your saints and your martyrs echo the song of the truth Nothing to lose but to gain Adoring the Lamb who was slain Who pours forth this power and riches and strength Not by appearance we see, no But by the power and the light of the living God Not by appearance we see No Now that darkness is banished And light is mine In Christ we go Oh the boy Jose Darío Never turned from Your name out loud While the girl Maria Goretta it kept your body sound Oh, the fire could not consume Your servant, Joan of Arc Nor the priest named Colby Sacrificed for not not by appearance they see, no But in the power and the light of the living God Not by appearance they see, no Now the darkness is banished and light is mine Not by appearance we see no, but in the power and the light of the living God, not by appearance we see. No.